like just because just because i sin at some point in my life and just because i do something that i don't know that i'm doing like if if i say hugged my mom when she was on her period chances are my mom is not telling me she's on her period i don't well, think maybe a lot you should of ask for now if you, i mean you should probably ask if you want to stay true to the bible dude you are being unreasonable right now no, because you're being even, unreasonable because you want to hold you, on to the one little Leviticus law that says something about wrong. homosexuality to push forward a homophobic agenda while ignoring yeah, yeah. the rest of all the Leviticus texts. So a little bit of backstory first. Before yeah. you, uh, before you, we get into conversation, we've now had several conversations. The last one being uh -huh. um, the gays don't deserve rights. Christian conservative returns. Yeah. And now we're back again to have yet another conversation. Uh, I do feel a little bit like I got to use the Simpsons meme where it's like, how many times did I need to teach you this lesson, old man? Yeah. But uh, what did you want to yeah. talk about now? I, I, I will be honest. My patience is kind of wearing thin. So yeah. I will try not to so, interrupt and be but, uh, mean, but like, I know you're young, but yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> Anyways, as I was going to say, I don't really think that was the last conversation we had. Actually, I think that that conversation was a re-upload of a prior conversation, which I told you not to upload again, but you re-uploaded the same exact video because presumably you're running short on content. Wait, what? No, the conversation that I uploaded where you said gay people don't deserve rights. That was yeah. not anything you that had nothing to do with you telling me not to upload it. I believe the video that you asked me to take down was our first conversation where you said that no, women shouldn't wear pants. No, it wasn't. That yes, was, it was. Um, you said that you that didn't want to stray true. people away from Christianity. Hey, man, let me talk. Let me and talk. you feel really Please. bad about it. Let me talk for a second. That conversation was like the second conversation I had. I, w I, w I woke up like 15 minutes prior to that conversation, was very, very tired couldn't properly defend myself and I was making admittedly so dumb points but that was like the second conversation we had and you re-uploaded that just now like a couple days ago hold on that that second conversation we had where you said uh, the thing about gay people yeah was where was, we offered to talk it. we decided to talk and yeah. then that was the second time we talked the first conversation well I know we had another conversation way back then we had a conversation about women wearing pants and stuff like that. I remember that one. And then that was the one where you said, I don't want to push people away from Christianity. Could you take that one down? And I said, no, I'm not going to take the video down because you came on the stream. You re -uploaded it, though. No, I didn't re-upload it. The conversation about gay people was the second or third conversation we had. I'm not remembering this. I'm That's pretty sure you just re-uploaded this video. Dude, I'm the one that content that creates the content that edits the content and uploads it. I did not yeah. re-upload a debate that I already had posted. I'm the one. I'm the one who talked to you, and I remember the conversation. It was a re-upload. It okay? I don't know what you mean by re-upload. Usually, when you say re-upload, that implies that the video was uploaded, and then I uploaded it yeah. a second time. That's yeah, not what, what happened. happened we had that conversation you, you on stream, it, and then I later decided to post you, it as a video. You put it in a different intro. With a different thumbnail and a different name, right? And then you re-uploaded it. That's what that's the content is the exact same. It was a stream segment that I then uploaded on my channel. Yeah. That's not a re-upload. But the content is the exact same. What did you want me to do? Do you want me to edit the content? No, I'm I'm just saying, man, like you're re-uploading basically verbatim the exact same content of me twice. That's kind of whack. Wait. No, I'm not. We had two different conversations. I'm going through right now, okay? We had this one where God says LGBT is a sin. Anyways, I don't really feel like getting into this. This isn't even really what I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to preface this. Oh, um, I know. We, we don't need to stick with this, but just a second. I, I want to defend yeah. myself here because we talked about you being anti-LGBT. We talked about the deriver, de, de, it deriving from Christianity, okay? That was the first yeah. one we did. Let's see. How did this one start up? Hold on. And then the second <laughs> one that we did was where I said, hey, I know we talked before. I know you're a little young and you asked me not to interrupt. So I tried to be a little nicer to the second conversation. I would. Uh, I would. OK, so they can were I two, get off of this? They were, you know, fine. You know, I'll, I'll let you have that, I guess. I'm not going to bother staying on this or even trying to defend it because I just want to move on to something else. Because I know how red herrings got placed down in the last conversation and it precipitated into something completely um, unwanted from my perspective, at least. Anyways, um, 
I wanted to address a few things that you said on stream about Christianity. I, I feel you very, very much misrepresented it in your um, stream two days ago. Okay. You uh, said that Christianity, it's it doesn't condemn homosexual acts. Yeah, that's correct. It's not correct. It 100% does. It does it on like six different occasions. So I'm going to have to pull up my PDF again, but right. Go are ahead. you talking about the Leviticus verse? You, we can start with that if you want. Okay. So first of all, where it calls it an abomination, that word had yeah. a different meaning at the time. Abomination meant virtually anything that was just like unusual or different. They also called spreading seeds in somebody else's field an abomination. Second of all, the thing in Leviticus was referring to a ritual, uh, like a ritual manual for priests if they wanted to stay pure. Lastly, okay. the part about men sleeping with men was actually yeah. referring to pedophilic acts where it talked no, about it yes it was where it talked about men sleeping with young boys that would oftentimes be castrated and treated like sex slaves mm -mm. no if you look at the um if you look at the masoretic texts which translated the kjv the word zahar is used that means male it doesn't mean little boy uh okay well contextually when they say another male they're referring to a child there i can try no, to pull not. up this article that i can There's there's absolutely no ground for that. That's there, no. That's there a, is. I'm trying to find the, a, the thing that I usually no, no, I'll, read. I'll explain to you. The the reason why you guys believe that is because there was a, if I'm not mistaken, the RSV, it was updated because it said boy with man before, but it it was later updated to say man with man, right? As a correction, but if you actually look at translations written like 300 years ago, even they say the exact same thing. It's man with man. Hold on a second. So this is not at all the article that I'm trying to read, but this comes from uh, Sage Journals. There are seven texts okay. often cited by Christians to condemn homosexuality. Noah and Ham, Sodom and Gomorrah, Levitical laws condemning same-sex relationships. Uh, yeah. Two words in two oh. Second Testament vice lists, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, 1 Timothy 1, 10, and Paul's letter to the Romans. The author believes that these do not refer to homosexual relationships between two free adult and loving individuals. They describe rape or attempted rape in Genesis, cultic prostitution in Leviticus, male prostitution in uh, pedestry, 1 Corinthians, and the Isis cult in Rome. The biblical authors did assume homosexuality if oh excuse me if the biblical authors did assume homosexuality was evil we do not feel a lot what is that word theologize off their cultural assumptions we theologize off of the texts we have in the canon the author attempts to introduce some new arguments into this long standing and passionate debate so that's just a little okay. abstract there i will try to find the um i know that i have the the pdf here that was written by a pastor Hold on. Probably a Lutheran, if I'm being honest. Martin Luther did some pretty stupid things when it came to theology. Um, he, yeah. like, split the church up into so many different sect sectors, and it was ridiculous. By the way, though, like, if you ever go to an Orthodox church, or you look at any church father history, mm -hmm. you will recognize that nowhere in church history does, like, anybody ever interpret it th to mean this. Well, yeah, of course, like, because they're homophobic. Them. Yeah, I know. No. This was from the beginning of the church, and nobody interpreted it to be this way. They had the cultural context. And yeah, I have the cultural context right here. I had to do some digging, and I found it. The Bible doesn't say that homosexuality is a sin. An analysis of the seven scriptures sometimes claim to refer to homosexuality. So let's start with so the, uh, the Levitical one. Know, I just want to clear something up because you made a claim I want to address. You said abomination is used to regard anything that is uh, unusual or uncanny. However, when you look at the text itself, like the full verse, it, it outlines a punishment for the homosexual act. If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall be put to death. Their blood is upon them. So yeah. to interpret, I'm going to just read this because, yeah, I don't have all this like just off the top of my head. I'm sorry. But to interpret these passages of Leviticus, it's important to know that this book of the Bible focuses on ritual purity for the Israelites and setting guidelines for the Israelites to distinguish themselves from their pagan neighbors. All right, let's see. This is shown what in Leviticus chapters 18 and 20, yada, 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 yada. Uh, the Bible readers of today, the word abomination conjures up disgust, horror, or evil. But to the ancient Hebrews, the word we translate as abomination simply meant unclean, taboo, or forbidden. The Old Testament uses the word abomination in reference to numerous things that were forbidden for the ancient Israelites, many of which make little or no sense to us today. 
For example, the Bible declares it an abomination to sow a field with two different kinds of seeds or to weave yeah. a cloth from two different kinds of fibers. I'm sorry. I'm just reading something from a pastor here, okay? So just give me a second. Um, yeah. Now let's find the actual part with Leviticus. In discussing the Levitical text that declared an abomination, Jack Rogers points out that all these texts were concerned with ritual purity and were intended to distinguish mm -hmm. Israel from its pagan neighbors. I already read that. It is difficult to mm -hmm. recapture the meaning of clean and unclean, pure and impure, as it was viewed in ancient Israel. The ancient Hebrew people had very particular ideas about men and women in relations uh, to purity laws. Men were not allowed to touch women during menstruation. For a man to have sex with another man was to mix and confuse the standards of maleness and femaleness. I would say. Yeah. So, so an important, can I an just, important, no, I'm going to read the summary and then we can get back to it. I, I know I'm being a little long winded here, but I'm trying to, I need, I have to read this to debunk all the dumb shit you're saying. So an no, important point to remember that this, that these verses of Leviticus were saying, do not participate in the kind of immoral sex that was done in pagan temples because it is unclean and taboo in our Hebrew society and does not keep us different from the pagan societies that surround us. Back in ancient times, it's understandable why the Israelite authors of Leviticus would include the include these rules in their writing but for today it is evident that they were not referring to a committed consensual homosexual relationship listen anyone can write that okay no, that's no like, but not everybody's like able to, to look at the text in the original hebrew and the original greek and then interpret I what did. it actually was referring to but i did and i i looked into the actual hebrew itself i told you the hebrew word that they use anyways as i was saying you said that it was something to set themselves apart i'm aware of the concept of holiness it's um used in regard to things like like two fabrics and stuff like that laws of not sewing two fabrics together mm -hmm. they call it something that you need to set yourself apart from the pagan nations to make yourself in their words holy because it just means to be a peculiar nation now it it says though and i i need you to explain to me though like how this means what you're saying because you just so citing the authoritative source of this guy doesn't mean anything. I can get you any any like rabbi who believes, well, like with the exception of like a few progressive ones, if those guys even exist, right? I can get you any rabbi to interpret Leviticus chapter twenty verse thirteen. He'll say the same thing I'm saying. I can get you any like account so of a do church you, father. Do you ancient understand church the, father, the crucial difference here? Say, because people in my say, chat. No, 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 no. Let, I let you talk for a while. Let me talk for five seconds, please. I can get you any historical church father and he will interpret it the exact same way. I guarantee you not like without a doubt he will. I don't this care. This is just how it's always been. This is a I don't recent... care what rabbis say or pastors say. But they tend to be very homophobic invention. and they tend to be massive dumb fucks. So but this let's is go a back recent again. invention though. No, 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 no. You, Stop. I no, 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 no. I get to clarify like here for a second because I have people in chat asking me the same thing. They're saying, how does this how is this not homophobic? Even if I were to grant you that this Levitical uh, verse is directly saying that a man sleeping with a man was wrong, they are not talking about that as a broad, uh, applicable law for all Christians to follow. This was talking about something very specific with a specific ritual that was specific for the times for the Hebrews to follow at that time to separate them from the pagans. So even if this verse was directly mm -hmm. homophobic, mm -hmm. Then the it still here. does I'm not. not I already just read it to you. OK, so no, even I'm, if this verse was directly it, homophobic, it is not to then be extrapolated as, well, the Bible condemns homosexuality. No, the Bible condemned homosexuality in specific contexts for the specific Hebrews at a specific time. So when people is, bring up Leviticus and say, oh, well, see, the Bible says it's bad. Well, then I hope you're going to follow your exact same logic and never touch a woman during her period. I certainly hope you're not going to sow two different kinds of seeds in a field. And I really pray to God that you're not going to weave cloth from two different kinds of fibers because all of those things were considered abominations for the Hebrews to do at that time as well. OK, so let me make my point here. If I look at the, uh, the verse prior and I look at the verse subsequent, right? It, it, it's just an enumeration of different sexual morality laws. It's not, it, there's no context of it being a, a cult tradition or whatever. Yes, that's, there that's is. Just, there are other verses that this, that this is based on. Can you so, show me a verse within the same chapter that says that, please? Sure. So the Bible readers of today, let me see if I can find this here. Uh, Focus is on ritual purity and setting guidelines, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Who lived by the lands before they settled. This is shown in Leviticus chapters 18 and 20 by three specific scripture passages. Leviticus 18, 2 through 3. All right, let's go ahead and 
pull this one up for you, buddy. Okay, 18, 2 through 3. Let's see. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, I am your Lord. You must not do as they do in Egypt, where you used to live. And you must not do as they do in the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you. Do not follow their practices. So this, again, was specific for the sexual relations at the time because God wanted to separate the Israelites from the Egyptians. Oh, that's, that's such a stupid claim, though. That's okay. such a dumb claim because it's talking about sexual moral law. It's not talking about ceremonial laws like two fabrics and stuff like that. Oh, oh, you want not me to find mention... the, the, the fabric verse? Because I can find that one, too, if yeah, you want. All I of can, this is linked here fabric. in this article. You can find me the fabric verse if you want to, but like you go, you go later on in the Bible where you, like you might claim something like pork, which is obviously something that's dispensed with in in the New Testament. You can point to things like the two fabrics things, which yeah, were and obviously. I can point to biblical historians law. that directly tell us that Canaanite religions I can, I can often include to... fertility rites of consisting of sexual rituals in their temples, sex with I temple can... prostitutes. Family members and homosexual sex was performed at the Canaanite temples and thought to bring good luck to help crop and livestock production. Again, well, I even can, if I, I no, 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 stop, because I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you something here, okay? I'm going to grant yeah. you this. Yeah. Let me go ahead and say that, yeah, this verse says homosexuality is bad. It doesn't mean that okay. we then extrapolate this as saying yes, that God condemns homosexuality. He condemned this in a specific time, in a very specific context, in order to separate Christians from the Canaanites and the pagans no. around them. No, that's not true. You look in. You look. Right, well, in you the... can just you can hold on to your feelings, but I like to focus on what the biblical historians tell us and what yeah, other I, pastors I would, are actually writing about this I shit. I would too, and that's why like every single church father in church history has ever that has ever existed has also said this. This is why every single rabbi that has ever existed in Judaistic history says this exact same thing. This is why everybody ever up until a certain point when Martin Luther, right, existed, had this opinion. And that's just a fact. And that's so how here's it's one. Been. Let me see if I can because find the can, original King just James. Just because you can cite like a couple Lutheran like pastors that say this kind of stuff because it's in their best interest doesn't mean anything. Not to mention, it literally says it in the New Testament as well. It's not just Old Testament. No, the, 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 if you want to talk about that. the Roman verse, that's specifically referring to verse. people that were giving in to a blatant hedonism and just fucking anything that moved. This was no, not referring not. to people in a loving, consensual, homosexuality, uh, homosexual relationship. That's not true. I, I've actually done an in-depth Bible study on that specific chapter, and nowhere in the context does it ever say that. So here's Deuteronomy 22.9. Do not plant two kinds of seed in your vineyard. If you do, not only yep. the crops you plant, but also the fruit of the vineyard will be defiled. So that's one? Yeah. I don't really care. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about homosexuality. You wanted me to bring up other verses where they also said that it would be defiled or, or an abomination. And I was reading no, I you one. I didn't want you that. No, I didn't. I ask thought that, that you just asked me to do that. Let's I let's take this a step that. back here. Why are you so no, set I, on believing I, the I, fact that the Bible condemns homosexuality? Does it give you like a, a feeling of validation and being homophobic, knowing that supposedly no. like God thinks being gay is bad? No, it doesn't. Because I just because the thing about being a Christian is it's it's called being faithful to His Word, and it's called. I want to properly represent what God wants. Right? So do you, are and you ever around gonna... your mom? Do you ever give your mom a hug when she's on her period? What are you talking about? Because that too was considered an abomination. So if you want to be true to the Bible, then are you following all of the Levitical laws? Listen, there's a difference between the law and following the law itself. Okay. It's not, I, I try my best to follow the law. Right. But, in the end, sometimes we all fall short, but we should at least knowledge acknowledge what God wants of us and what God wants of our society. Um, okay, so I will go back to my first question. Have you ever touched a woman during her period? I don't know. So you don't know. If you have, then you have broken Leviticus law and you're failing God and you're not following the Bible. 
what are you talking? Okay. So, like, have uh, no, you no, ever, no. Do you see you the contradiction here? Because you're telling no, me I that don't. because the Bible says gay bad, that therefore you need to be out here preaching homophobia, but you ignore the rest of the Levitical laws because you are it. trying to press push forward a homophobic agenda rather than you are actually trying to stay, quote unquote, true to the Bible. Yeah, I'm not actually coming into contradiction with the Bible. Um, you can go with these personal attacks, but the Bible says that we are all liars. We've all lied in our lives. Have you ever lied? Well, I guess that you're breaking the Bible law. Like, just because just because I sin at some point in my life, and just because I do something that I don't know that I'm doing, like, if, if I, say, hugged my mom when she was on her period, chances are my mom is not telling me she's on her period. I don't well, think a lot of people should ask for no one. If you, I mean, you should probably ask if you want to stay true to the Bible. Dude, you are being unreasonable right now. Because no, you're being even, unreasonable because you want to hold on to the one little Leviticus law that says something about homosexuality to push forward a homophobic agenda while ignoring yeah, yeah. the rest of all the Leviticus texts. So let's go ahead and um, let's look at this. Um, in the book of Jude, this is a New Testament book. It's the one right before Revelation. It talks about Sodom and Gomorrah, and it says that they were destroyed because they gave themselves over to fornications and going after strange flesh. What are you? Right? Which verse was this? It's Jude, verse seven. Okay. Well, I'm not. I want to focus on the Leviticus thing first. We can go over to some okay. other verses maybe another time. Well, you're saying that but this here's is, Leviticus. You're saying though that this is. You're I'm saying, no. Let me explain. No. no I'm, I'm, no, I'm explaining, I'm explaining this because you're trying to no, move no, the subject, let me, let and I'm trying to stick on the specific verse, and I'm trying to show you. You're not because not you're being you inconsistent. Talk. You're no, lying right now to yourself you... and everybody else. Dude, dude, I'm not gonna let you talk because I need to explain the significance of what I'm explaining here. I'm saying that this is a New Testament thing as well. It was you can't just pull up the dispensationalist position and say that this was just something given to a certain people at a certain time to for them to remain holy. It was given to the Jews, like like back in this back in this ancient Judaistic historical time era. You're talking about Jude or Judges. I'm referring to the Leviticus thing that I brought up, but I'm saying also that it's a New Testament thing as well. It's very biblically consistent. This is like, I don't know who you are and who you think you are when you say like you have any understanding of anything theological. Like I seriously I could say the don't exact same thing to you, my friend. Now, let me go no. ahead and read this verse to you really quick. Leviticus 15, 19 through 33. Whenever a woman has her menstrual period, she will be ceremonially unclean for seven days. Anyone who touches her during that time will be unclean until evening. Anything on which the woman lies or sits during the time of her period will be unclean. If any of you touch her bed, you must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water, and you will remain unclean until evening. So do you think you've ever sat on the couch after your mom sat on the couch when she was on her period? You know, do you know what ceremonialism is? Is it something, something of, that, regarding a ritual? Yeah. It's no, it's basically what what that was is it's like a way of them quarantining themselves so they don't go ahead and spread diseases and stuff. Right. That was a ceremonial law. It's not really applicable to us anymore because really. So this Levitical yeah, law is ceremonial and a ritual law that doesn't need yeah. to apply. But the homosexuality one just conveniently isn't. It's yeah, it isn't. It's a moral law. It's not a ceremonial one. No, it's not. It's literally referring. Yes, it you can read the context. I already read the context, yeah. but I'm more interested again in the broader issue that we context, have here. Though. I'm not interested as much in just like digging up one or two verses. I'm interested in specifically two things. One, you clearly don't follow all of the Levitical laws, even some of the laws that exactly. are follow are calling for quote unquote moral behavior. The original text, for example, well, not the original, but from the King James Version, and if a woman has an issue and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days, and whoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the evening. So that is not, no, no, that doesn't reference ceremonial anything, okay? So yes, if we want to, no, if we want to take literally this the to the ceremonial, it's the ceremonial quarantine that these people need to undergo. That's, that's how that would work. And not to mention, I'm not you're saying the one Levitical even, law is ceremonial, but the other one isn't, even though it was referring the, to the a ritual here. purity thing but, at the but, time. But no, it's not. It's referring to, well, these people are getting punishments basically to death for doing an immoral sexual act, right? That is not just ceremonial. That's a moral law. 
and and again, I'm going to explain this to you. I'm I'm not trying to hone in on homosexuals in specific. I believe that we all fall under sin, right? But we should at least try our best because I'm I, like if I ran into somebody who's just bombastically lying to everybody they see they're a pathological liar and i catch them in that i'm probably going to hold them uh, like more accountable than i would a homosexual if i'm being honest okay it's just like i'm not i'm not like forwarding an agenda i'm just a christian okay i got that but when you say that like oh that part was ceremonial but the part about gay people is actually moral no all of leviticus levitical law is focusing on ritual purity for the, the entirety Israelites. of the book of Leviticus? Are yes. you kidding me? Yes. It's You're trying joking. to set guidelines for the Israelites to distinguish themselves from yes. their pagan neighbors. Again, I'm going to keep going back to this. You just because don't know anything about no, church history. You do don't you? know anything because you don't I follow do, any of the Levitical laws except the Bro. one little bit about how being gay is supposedly bad. Dude, I literally, I've explained this to you and I have, like the Bible calls us to rightly divide the word of God. That's what I've done. If I'm rightly dividing the word of God, I'm not willfully disobeying them. I'm I'm ignorantly disobeying. Otherwise, you'd have to like prove to me how this means what you're saying. And it, you haven't proved that. All you've done is cite like some some like Lutheran scholars that say so and so, but like everybody else disagrees with them. Yeah, I don't care. The church has had a very long history of homophobia, racism, so what? sexism, etc. So I don't Good. give a shit if more people disagree or whatnot. This is basing Good. off of the Good. original text care. and the original contextual history with Leviticus. This, so you say original, you say original, yes, though, but because it's go back to you, a because. But if you trace it back to its origins, nobody has ever said this about this specific law. Nobody ever. I don't care, and that's not true. The literal Bible supposedly does. The, After the, the doings of the Bible, land in Egypt, the, wherein the ye dwell. The literal Bible supposedly dies. What? Yeah, I'm you're reading. You're joking, man. Okay. You're joking. You're, yes, you're right. I'm I'm joking right now. Here's the verse anyway. Leviticus 18, 2 through 3. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after doing the things of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. So that yeah. verse very explicitly is explaining how what God is saying there is that the book of Leviticus here in Levitical law is referring to specific purity rituals to separate the Israelites from the Canaanites and from the Egyptians. Okay. This does yeah. not follow then that, oh, well, the Bible says being gay is bad, lol. No. It I doesn't. don't think you understand what I, you're talking about. I understand I perfectly, and I'm explaining to you from the literal biblical text the way this that is, Leviticus this is, actually, is talking this is about a purity ritual, debated. and you're trying to extrapolate that <sighs> to, again, support the fact that you don't like gay people. That's so I'll it. give you an example of this, right? I, I, it's not that I don't like gay people. I love gay people. I want them to go to heaven. I'm no, not saying don't. gay people. I'm not saying that gay people go to hell. I wouldn't yes, suppose you do. that. That's like. No, I no. You what? said it's a sin. What? They're living in sin. I, I, oh my goodness, man! Just let me talk for five seconds, okay? I, this is this is like it's like this kind of a debate, right? There's a there's a heavy baptism debate within the within Christian theology, where you know, uh, Catholics will say you need you need baptism to be saved, but the a lot of like the complete opposite end, say the Bible believing dispensationalist group, those guys. They will say that because they mention Jews within the same chapter that it's specifically for them and that we, it doesn't apply to us Gentiles. Like, you have to be incredibly, like, low-tier theologian to suggest that just because it mentions something in specific that it applies throughout the entire verse. That is just not something that's theologically honest. And it's the same thing that goes within this Levitical text. Just because a couple chapters before that it says not to follow in the footsteps of Canaanite and pagan nations, that doesn't mean all the sexual moral law is not applicable to us nowadays, especially when it reiterates this kind of stuff in the New Testament. Okay, that's fine. But I have an, a bigger issue here that I keep trying to go back to, which is, I first, of all, I, people, first of all, Come to be honest, here. I don't believe you because this Leviticus verse is making it pretty clear that... Levitical law is referring to uh, an attempt to separate the Israelites from the pagans. But again, I don't think we're going to get anywhere else with that conversation. I'm more interested in you. I'm more interested in yeah. why do you feel the need to desperately try and interpret the Bible to support a way that hates on gay people? 
Why not? It's very. It's a very consistent line of interpretation. So, but like, why are you so insistent upon this? So let, let let's say for what? hypothetically that I say, yeah, the Bible says being gay is bad. Being gay is disgusting. Uh, and it's an abomination. Yep, you're a hundred percent right. I've Homosexuality is you. bad. So then, what do you do? Where Where do you take this? Hunter, are you gay? No. Okay, you're not gay. No. Okay. So, are you a liar? Have you ever lied in your life? Yes. Okay. Well, chances are, if you were gay, I would care probably just as much about your lying just as I would your homosexuality. I'm not desperately trying to do this, but when I see somebody in their stream like misrepresent the Bible to forward their political agenda to appropriate Christianity and Christian history, all of this different stuff, it bothers me because it's just not true to the Bible. I'm not some guy trying to forward a political agenda to kill all the gays. I don't you think know, you're trying like, to kill all the gays, but I think that you don't even realize what you're saying and how it uh, interprets to being blatantly homophobic. So for example, I don't think homophobia is a bad thing then. Okay, cool. So then ba we're back to the main thing, which is a huge contradiction when you said you love gay people. You don't love gay people. What is homophobia then? If you what think is that discrimination or fear of gay people is justified, then you do not love gay people. Or at least maybe you only love gay wait, people based on wait, what I don't you think say. That's what, and I don't maybe think when that's you said, homophobia. you know what, maybe when you I said you love gay people, you were lying to me. Wait, hold on, Hunter Avalon. I don't, I don't recall though that because, if I'm not mistaken, I meant homophobia as in like being strictly against homosexual acts. That's and, bad. Yes. Yeah, I'm not afraid of them, and I don't hate them though. I don't like discriminate being against, against homosexuality or being against yeah. homosexuals living their lives freely or being against homosexual acts, quote unquote, is homophobia. Yes, dude. I'm. I'm literally just saying that it's it's sinful, and I don't like sin. Therefore, I'm against sin. Therefore, I'm against homosexual acts. Right, but even that but by that's... itself, that is homophobic. To claim okay, so... that being gay is a sin is homophobic. Yeah. It's the same so... thing as saying being white is a sin or being black is a sin. I feel like if this I is came up here, and... wait, wait, wait. I want to ask you a genuine question. If I yeah. said, "Listen, you know, I'm not racist or anything," okay? I just think that the Bible says that being black is a sin. What do you take away from that? I would take away from that that it's a it's a brutal misrepresentation of what the Bible has to say. Sure. So again, though, if I were then arguing with you, no, 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 no. This is according to the Bible. This is what it says. Being black is a sin. OK, I'm not racist, though. I just think that being black is a sin. It kind of sounds like I'm being racist. It's kind of hard you're... to argue against that at the end of the day. Well... Well, if you're being an honest person and you genuinely think that you found that in the Bible, I would probably sit down with you and ask you where you found that. Um, that's probably what would happen. I'm not going to, like, attack you. I'm not going to call you racist. I'm going to ask you, like, like where on, where on earth did you find this? I don't care what because... you would call me or anything. I'm <clears throat> asking specifically because you, you're saying I'm not homophobic. I just believe well, I that being that. gay is a sin. I you said I love I gay people. I just think that being gay is a sin. So yeah. how is that not homophobic the same way that me saying being black is a sin is obviously racist? Well, the way – well, it depends on your definition of homophobic. It's like if I – if it's like if I said polygamy is bad because it is. It's adultery. If I said polygamy is bad, would that make me like somebody who's hating people who get into polygamous relationships? Probably not. I'm just saying that in my honest Christian opinion, that is not a good thing and that we should... I think we should focus on the definition of sin. That sin really gets is, us there. So sin is, is by like, definition an immoral act considered to be a transgression against divine law. So how are people yeah. who are existing as gay people who literally have a genetic predisposition to being gay, how is that an immoral act? Well, first of all, um, I think it's... You know, I'm not, I don't want to get into like a scientific argument with you or anything, but, you know, first of all, I'm not saying homosexuals like inherently. I might have said that before as like a blanket term for people who do homosexual things, like have homosexual sex, get into homosexual unions. Mm -hmm. um, however, what, what I mean by that is people who partake of homosexual things, like if a gay person he doesn't have sex with other guys, you know, 
and he doesn't he doesn't do gay things like that, then I, I guess he's not sin. I guess probably I've been an adulterer more than he has because I've I've lost it before. So why let's okay fine I'll I'll go ahead and uh, um follow your your logic train here. Why is being gay or participating in gay acts immoral? I've already showed you, and the um that's what we've been arguing on. Well, I know you're you're referencing the Bible. Let's say that I say yeah. you know what I don't believe the Bible at all. Why is it immoral? Well, then I would I would probably talk to you about Christianity then. So the only way that you can justify that it is immoral is through the lens of Christianity? No, that's not true. Okay, so how do you secularly tell prove to me that being gay is a sin? I don't think secularism is very important. It's like... It is when that's the, what the vast majority of Americans believe, and more and more people are embracing secularism, and more and more people are leaving the secularism. religious aspect of things because of people like you, largely. So yeah, it is I've very important. So how is it I've immoral? Yeah, I've got a question for no, you. No, you can't ask this, me a question until you answer mine. This, this is going to be an answer for your question, and it's going to sort of allegorically answer it. It's say God is real. Say God is a real God, and he's omnipotent. He created this universe. He created moral law and gave things their moral properties. Mm -hmm. And he, he made these things up, and that's just objectively what they are because he's the fabricator of all. So let's say that's true. And heaven is real and hell is real. If I talk to somebody in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, what do you think would yield more fruit? If I talk to this guy about why gay bad from a secular um, point of view, or if I talk to him from a religious point of view that he should be born again of the spirit, that he should become a Christian. And I'm not even going to talk to him about homosexuality in that conversation. I'm going to talk to him about how he can become a Christian because I think that converting to Christianity is more important than pinpointing someone's sin and judging them because of that. So in the end, answer me this. If God is real and all these presuppositional positions are correct, do you think it's going to be better if I ask this guy, hey, um, or if I talk to this guy and talk to him from a secular position why homosexuality is bad? Or do you think it's going to yield more fruit if I talk to this guy about getting saved and how he can go to heaven forever? Which one is more important to you? Well, my question is, do you believe that if he were to embrace God and become a Christian, do you think that he would cease to be gay? No, I don't. I don't suppose that. So what would be the end result if that if the gay person is to say, you know what, you're right. I'm embracing God right now, but they're still going to be gay. So yeah. then what? Well, he's a well, he's a gay brother in Christ then. Well, then he's a gay person who's going what to if have he wants then? to live his life, uh, have a fulfilling, happy life. That doesn't hurt anyone else by getting married to another man, to somebody he loves. That's not marriage, biblically. Okay, we're not going down to another can of worms there. So to be honest, if there, if I were to presuppose that the God like that existed, then truthfully I would rather burn in hell than ever submit myself to a dumb fuck God of that extent. So I would well, again want to ask you, hold well, on. Maybe you're no, no, just no. dumb. Stop. Maybe why you're is dumb it immoral? You, don't you can't tell me why it's immoral other than because God I said so. You. Why? Okay, why is it immoral? You. Well, because God made the law. No, okay. You can't give me because God said so. I try to assess things if they are right or wrong, usually based on if there is a harmful outcome of that thing, okay? Yeah, that's a very, very bad way to assess whether something is morally good or not from well, a philosophical and a, from a theological perspective. That's great. I'm, I'm very glad you're very big-brained here. But again— if we're talking about being gay is immoral, yeah. then you need to tell me what makes it immoral. Where's the harm here? Here, yeah, but you, what you don't understand is morality doesn't necessarily align with harm principles and and pleasure principles. That's just not how morality is fabricated. That's not how it then works. Then it's not moral, an and I don't view that as being very moral. Because, okay, if, God just, is, because if God is the yeah. ultimate creator, then why is God creating people that have a genetic predisposition to being gay. It's like this. God made the law, and he said this is objectively what this is. He also said that other people would go about establishing their own righteousness, like establishing what they think is right and wrong. That's just you thinking that you're right because you've developed this sort of idea in your life that it is what it is. I think you're able to give me a single argument outside of religion. Hey, I don't, okay, I can I don't try, care. I, can try I literally can don't try follow the Bible. Religion. To be honest, it's kind I of a pain in the ass that I always have to like 
Oh, hold on. Hunter, can I can I just finish, I please? Can... It's kind of a nope, pain in the I... ass when I have to like go through the old three thousand year old book of fables to explain how actually the original text doesn't really condemn homosexuality the way you think it does. Blah 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 blah. I don't even believe in the fucking Bible. I think it's a joke. So okay. if you're talking to someone like me who has established my own version of righteousness and I've turned my back on God Almighty, how do you get through to me then that being gay is immoral? Hey, Hunter, I think that this would be a, it would be easier for me to prove my position if I could prove Christianity to you, because that's just a, that's just a line of deducibility and, and, and logic that you can, using deductive reasoning but from one so, position okay, to another wait. and another. I'm you sorry can, to keep you can, cutting you off, no, no, dude, but no, no, no. I told you my patience was wearing thin and it really is wearing even thinner now. So I'm going to cut you off again. Let's say hypothetically, then fine. You've convinced me that Christianity is correct. You've convinced me that God is the objective arbiter of all morals. Okay. And now God says being gay is bad. Well, how do you follow that through to the person who is gay, who is not able to just stop being gay? What are they supposed to do then? Are they supposed to live a life of celibacy? Are they supposed to have a miserable, depressing, lonely life because Wait, hold on. because God? Help me understand do you think, here. Do you think that the Bible says that being gay is wrong? Wait, you just have been making the argument that it's immoral. No, I've been making the argument that homosexual acts is wrong. The attribute of being gay okay. isn't necessarily let's, in and of right, itself I'm Sorry, wrong. I should have been more specific there. If you have converted me to God, or let's say even you've converted a, yeah. a gay person to God, okay, then mm -hmm. what? I'm asking you, should they live a life of celibacy, which would mean abstaining from engaging in the immoral act, supposedly, of homosexuality? Should they just embrace a life of loneliness and sadness because God? Isn't that what nuns do? That's exactly what nuns do, actually. Okay. So then the answer is, yes, they should embrace a life of celibacy and loneliness. Hold on, Hunter Adelon, though. I want to ask something, though. Like, I'm, I'm not even trying to debate with you here. I'm just genuinely trying to have a conversation, like reasoning with you one person to another. If, if I were to talk to you and I were to try to manage having a conversation with you, trying to prove the Christian faith, like, would you take that seriously like try reasoning with me no. or every single time i talk to you are you gonna like think of an argument that you have to say against me like is this something that you have to do on stream to like i don't know how to retain an uh, an audience or something or no it's that i legitimately find the like christian faith to be really really stupid and unfortunately man you're demonstrating that the big problem that i have with christianity That's is that so reasonable. many people no you're not is that so many people weaponize their religion to oppress and abuse and judge other people, and you're doing it too. When you're telling no, me that gay, no, yes, you not. are. When you're telling <laughs> no, me that gay not. people don't count as real marriage, no. and that gay people actually engaging in any kind of sexual activity or anything that would be an act of lovingness or add fulfilling uh, add a fulfilling <laughs> aspect to their life, you're telling me that all that is wrong. Oh. And secondly, you, know, you brought up the like, nuns thing. No, 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 I want to address your point. No, no, no wait. One more thing, um, really quick. No, no, you brought no, up the no, no. Hold on. Sh like you brought up gallop, hush, gallop, hush, gallop, hush, gallop. hush. No, I'm not gish galloping. I am uh, literally gish trying gish to explain the other thing you said. Points. You brought up Two nuns. Points, yeah. Nuns choose that shit. Yeah. You have Christians that are saying, no, you can't be gay because that's a sin. You can't act on those attractions what? and those no, feelings because it's a sin. You're totally mad. Come on. No, that's not what I said at all. You asked me if this guy willingly became a Christian, what would I expect him to do? Nuns willfully are nuns. Gay people who are Christians are willfully gay Christians. So then what's the answer there? Should they uh, embrace a life of celibacy and loneliness? Yes, but I'm not forcing everybody to do it. You're misrepresenting me. No, I'm not. I'm explaining how a lot of the times Christians weaponize their faith I don't to care bludgeon what people. Do. I don't care. You are doing it too. Don't. No, You're I'm not. Right what are now. you talking about? No, I'm not. You there? Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for you to actually make a point. I'm not weaponizing Christianity. I've already told you. Like, homo, like homosexual acts. It's like something I, I care just as much about that as I would somebody lying to me. I would... I would care to convince somebody of Christianity who is gay oh, okay, just as much who I would try convincing somebody who is a liar that 
you know, God is the difference God is, is that lying tends to do harm and it breaks down relationships and breaks down trust and harms dude, that's your debatable. Per- no, that's it doesn't. Debatable. And it harms often. Yeah, if you're a serial liar, okay, obviously situational lying. I'm talking is probably about okay. homosexuals as a juxtaposition. If homo- homosexuals. I could probably make it this secular argument that they, they are bad for relationships as well as a juxtaposition for lying as something that is equally as harmful. But I'm not going to. It's not equally as harmful. Concept. That's the problem is you're comparing. You're saying I would be just as against people who are lying as I would be against people engaging in homosexual is acts. This the problem the is difference is that opinion. when you're lying, especially as like a serial liar, you usually are doing harm to yourself. You're breaking down people's trust in you, and that is going to harm you throughout your life. Being gay, however, does not do any harm. It literally doesn't result in any harm other than homophobes getting mad. There's no harm done by people being gay and living their lives happily. In fact, telling a gay person to abstain for the rest of their life and live a life of celibacy because God made them gay for some reason is far more harmful than just allowing a gay person to live their life happily. Okay, this is the problem, though, is this is a presuppositionalist, um, like this, you're pre- not necessarily presuppositionalist, but you're, you're supposing that harm equates to, it equates to morality, which I disagree with. Okay, then I don't really care about your morality, because then you can just say, well, God says this thing, the ultimate authority, so fuck you, gays, and then that's it. That's the end of the argument no, for you. No, it's, it's that even on a philosophical, secular perspective, it doesn't even work out. People in chat are asking a question, and I hate to do the appeal to nature thing because it's very cringy, but yeah. why are animals gay? Animals gay because they're animals and they're not humans. But, like, God created everything. So like yeah, if we see did. gay behavior throughout <clears throat> nature along with being hu- along in humans, like doesn't that kind of contradict a little bit? Or is God just is making natural? people – is God is just lying making – natural? Is fornication natural? Is, is – I recognize that the natural appeal to nature argument to explain anything being moral or right or wrong is, doesn't make sense. Obviously, I argue yeah. against that. But I'm asking you if there are animals that are also gay – does that not follow that God and his creation seem to be gay sometimes? Uh, that's kind of a weird question, but it's like, it's being, is, is lying natural? Like sometimes that's going to happen naturally is, is like raping somebody in nature, you know, natural. Well, sometimes it happens. I'm not, I'm not saying, yeah, of course, rape happens in yeah, nature all the time. I'm I not saying this you're extends just, to anything saying, moral. Saying, I'm saying that this extends to something. There's something deeper here. This isn't only witnessed in humans. Yeah, I'll I'll explain to you how it's not natural, though, um, because there's a very specific. It's the Romans one that you were talking about. It talks about how the natural use for women was put away in exchange for the unnatural use of men, which was sex. Actually, you know that supports my argument. Because you're talking about people engaging in things that are unnatural. Gay people are naturally attracted to the same sex. So if no, anything, I'm according to that about, verse, it would actually be a sin to not be gay if you were gay. What? No, I'm, I'm talking about the natural use, not, not like the natural proclivity. Okay. Honestly, dude, I don't think I can take any more of this conversation. I don't feel like you have a very firm grasp on you, any of this. Already told you that you're not willing to, like, willfully and honestly argue. Yeah, well, no, um, I'm perfectly willfully and honestly ready to argue. I've been honestly arguing with you for the last you, 47 minutes. You just don't you like that I'm pushing back on this in. dumb fuckery. You're trying you, to say you it's to... immoral because God said so. And I'm saying if God is going to say something is immoral, then you better have a damn reason for why it's immoral. Yeah, Usually it's not God's morals can line up with things that are harmful, believe it or not. Do not murder. Yeah, yeah murdering is harmful. Do not lust after another man's wife. Yeah, that can harm your relationship and harm the other why person's harm relationship. Bad? No, from your perspective, why is harm bad? <laughs> All right, buddy. Honestly, I think I've got to say – I think that right, you well, might be the abomination here, dude. Hey, Hunter Avalon, before I go, and I, pres- I presume that this is me getting kicked off the stream. Yes. You already told me that you weren't willing to argue with me the existence of God. Like, believe it or not, I have genuine arguments that I, that I would be more than willing to go over with you. No. And believe it or I not, I'm, I'm, like, I'm trying to, like, conduct myself in a, in a more, like, 
nice way to you. I'm I'm being nice to you, and I'm I not trying care. to. Be nice to you. you always and pull that's... this thing where you're like, I'm being nicer, Hunter. I don't care. Your entire yeah, ide problem. no no no. Your entire that's ideology the, the problem, is not nice. You believe that gay people are immoral if they actually engage in a loving, consensual relationship. The last conversation demonstrated that because you hold those beliefs, you also really are kind of against gay people adopting, which harms children. Like I don't care if ago. you're over here in the, the Discord being nice, ooh woo. I don't care. You uh -huh. are advocating for a restriction and a harm on gay people. And so I don't care, again, if you're being nice, your ideology is the furthest thing from nice. I don't. Well, like, that's the thing is I'm trying to. That's not even the point that I'm trying to make is that I'm nicer than you. Therefore, I have a more authoritative voice. That's not even the point that I'm trying to make. The point that I'm trying to make to you is that I'm more than willing to conduct myself in a way that is reasonable. Like, I genuinely want to help you. That's my that's my thing here is I genuinely want to help you out, help your understanding because you're not I see some... you're hurting me. You're hurting my brain cells. Every time we talk, my brain cells are more and more hurt. And every time we talk, I'm more and more convinced that that's being a Christian is talk. really gross and leads to harm on people that are oppressed and marginalized, where if we were to allow gay people to just live their lives happily, that would do a lot less harm than well, Christians trying to restrict gay people from living their lives happily. Isn't that called cognitive dissonance? I, if you want to learn about cognitive uh, dissonance, I would recommend looking in the mirror. But anyway, thank you very much for the talk. Yeah, I'm done. Mirror, like, We're, like, you're I probably not coming back on the stream now, buddy. Have a good one, okay? All right, God bless. God you. says you're an abomination. <sighs> okay. I that that was really painful. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified when I drop a new video.